In this video, we're going to create this cloth simulation at the bottom of a trench coat. Now I'm going to use Simply Cloth Pro to show you how to use this. However, at the end of the video, we'll be using the native cloth simulation in Blender. If you want to pick up Simply Cloth Pro, there is a link in the description. So the first thing I am going to do is go simply create cloth. And I'm just going to set the baking frames to maybe just 250. And I'm just going to press play. And we can see that the cloth fell straight through because I haven't even done anything, you muppet. So <laughs> let's press, I'm just going to move it forward a little bit and then press tab into edit mode on this coat so we can go and create some pin groups. Now, if we look at this coat, I kind of want just this bottom half to act independently. Now, technically I could go above this waistcoat However, if I do that, then we come into all sorts of problems with kind of like these straps here where they're not really being pinned to anything. And it's just going to cause us a little bit of a hassle. So what I'm actually going to do is probably come a little bit lower and go from just below this waistcoat to where the simulation starts. What I will do is delete this button here because that's not pinned to anything. So I'm just going to delete that. Let's just get rid of that jazz. So let's start off by selecting our top part of the coat, because that's what we want to be worrying about. So let's go box select, probably all this jazz in here. Ugh, go into wireframe mode, come on Marco. Box select again, everything probably about here-ish. I might just press numpad plus, just to expand it just one little extra piece. There we go, so all this, this is where the animation is gonna start. Maybe we might actually get rid of this section here. So I'm just going to deselect that and that just so the bending happening happens up here. Let's maybe even go one more. So we'll just go all the way around. There we go. That's looking good. Let's just do it quickly to the other side as well. All right. So how's that looking? So yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. So everything that we've got now got selected is going to be pinned. So it's going to stay on the character. So let's now go add pin layer top coat. Okay, there we go. So now when we go into object mode, we should see that it goes a little bit loopy. That's fine. Now the next thing we need to look at is the modifiers. And if we just quickly press uh, play, <laughs> we can see that it's kind of working, but it's all over the shop. So what I might do is I'm just going to bake it just so it saves that information and then we can go again. So I'm just going to go bake and then let's just press play. And we can see that the cloth is kind of clipping through all the clothing. However, we can see that the dynamics is working and that's exactly what we're after. Now there are a few things that we still need to change such as it's clipping through the clothing. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to select our clothes. I'm going to shift D on that pair of pants. From here, I'm going to go into add modifier and decimate. Now I really don't need a dense mesh for the cloth simulation. So by using the decimate, we speed up the baking time. I'm going to actually probably go maybe 0.05, really bring that mesh down. And if I press control A, that works fine. Now we've got this kind of like overriding mesh. If we come into armatures, we can see our jeans too. Let's go into our filters. I'm just going to highlight everything. I don't want to see it in the rendered view, which is this one, disable in renders. Now we could go through and select everything else. The reason why I've gone pants is because it's obviously the closest to the pants, but I'm going to actually going to select the body as well and do the exact same thing. Let's go shift D. We can see our body two here. Add modifier decimate 0.05. Now we're going to have a problem with this one. So if I press control A to apply this decimate, it'll say that there's still shape keys. So we actually need to come back into our object data properties here. Let's get rid of our shape keys, come back into the modifiers, and now we can do control A. Let's disable that in the render. So when we go to render it, it's not gonna be there. Let's select our cloth again. I'm going to delete our simulation just to make sure it clears all the information. And lastly, what we need to do is now add in our collision. Now we go into the physics panel. There we go, we enable collision. And then we'll do that on our jeans too as well, add in our collision. Let's now select our coat and we're gonna bake all dynamics. Now, if we press play, we should see, yeah, kind of a little bit of artifacts all the way up here. So we can see some like a rough as guts stuff happening up there. So if I just go back to the start and let's kind of just scrub through it, 
we can see that it's kind of being pulled up and it goes all over the shop. Now, the reason for that is, is kind of like the collision distance, I guess. So if we select the coat, let's come down into object collision distance. I'm gonna change this to 0.002. Let's select our pants and we can see our soft body and cloth thickness outer. I'm actually gonna change this to maybe 0.002. And inner, I'm going to bring this down to 0.05. And we got to do that for the jeans as well. 0 0.002, 0 0.05. Another thing as well is if we come into here, let's go into the uh, particle, no, sorry, the shape keys. And we've got our top coat. Let's go tab into edit mode. You can see how we've gone pretty much 100% along here. What I'm actually going to do is select this kind of line here. There we go. I'm actually gonna set the weight to 0.5 assign. So now it's kind of got a little bit of a buffer through there. The other thing that we can do as well is kind of just blow this area out. So I'm just gonna press O to go into proportional editing, scale, shift Z so it goes along the X and the Y. And let's just kind of billow it out a little bit. Now the, for the reason for that is, is so it's a little bit off the mesh there. We probably could have done it a little bit lower, but we know that this bit here will fall down onto the body. So back into object mode, back into solid mode, delete the previous bake. Let's bake it all again. And hopefully now we've got something decent. There we go, our cloth has fallen down. And now we've got all our cloth kind of dynamics working quite nicely. This strap is obviously wrapping around the leg and so on and so forth. The one thing that we haven't done is enabled self collision. Now this is a little bit finicky, but yes, we're gonna have to do it. So down to the bottom here, turn on self collision, delete the bake, bake it all again. And then we go kind of like, as we scrub through, we can see that the complete difference between um, this cloth and this where it's rigged, that is looking pretty good. We've got a bit of an issue here where it's gone through the hand and I'm going to assume that it's going to be stuck in there for the rest of the animation. <laughs> so I think what's happened here is that it's a little bit too violent, such as, I mean, the cloth is moving around a little bit too much. So there's two things we can do here is we can bump up the quality steps or the other is increase the object collision distance. So for instance, come up to here, maybe 0.02 ish. And then that should technically fix it. Let's just try it one more time. All right, so let's see how that's looking. It is looking horrendous, probably because of all the self collision. Oh, yeah, probably shouldn't have picked something so violent as an animation, but you can kind of see how this all works. I think, yeah, this is now definitely to blame the self collision. So we actually got to probably bring this back down to 0.002. And so, yeah, what's happening is that it's the cloth is moving so violently that it's losing track. So I might even try, do I dare do this? Let's bump it up to 12. I am gonna regret this. All right, let's check this out. How does it look while it lands? Quality of steps is much better. We can see that we've got a bit of issue where it's clipped through, but we have what we're after. Ish, kinda. <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. So now that we've cleared all that out, now we're just using Simply Cloth Pro is native, but now we're going to do it without it. I've already used all the, um, you know, set all the collisions and so on and so forth, but now it's just about the cloth. So into the physics tab, let's turn on cloth. First thing I'm going to do is enable that pinning so that it stays. We come down to the pin group and our pin group is top coat. I believe. And so if I were to press play, we should see that it sticks there. Beautiful. So we know that bit already works. So let's come back. The other thing we're gonna do is obviously the self collision. So we'll turn that on and see how that goes. Quality of steps, we know that we're gonna have to bump that up. So I'm just gonna straight away bump it up to 12. Now, the other thing that we don't have here is the type of material. Obviously we'd have kind of have to play with, you know, the stiffness and damping where in Auto Rig uh, Simply Cloth Pro, we can actually select the type of cloth. 
Let's also go up here to the quality of steps and we'll bump that up to 12. Why not? Let's just go all out. Just trying to think, is there anything else? Object collision is 0 0.015. I think that was fine as is. But what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna go bake. Let's go bake all dynamics. And now if we kind of scrub through it, you see that we've got these wonderful issues again. But once again, it's all because of the uh, violence of that first bit. Now I wanted to have that violence just so we could see it but we see that all that interaction and so on and so forth. So we've got that issue again. So I think maybe dropping or maybe increasing the self collision distance up a little bit and also the distance here, the object collision distance as well, that might fix that problem as well. We could always increase the size of the scene. So maybe times the characters by 10 and everything, and that'll allow more freedom, but that's something you can do with more testing, so on and so forth. But I just kind of wanted to show you this the manual way. So if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and keeps up to date my content.